great first fast hour. Time to check in now with our good friend, Ty Dennis from Clippers and Cops, wearing the damn impressive gear. How's it going, my friend? Good, how are you guys? It's good to have you here. We'll get you loaded up here. All right, Ty Dennis in the house. Hey, when was your last event? What's the latest with Clippers and Cops? Uh, we just got back from uh, Milwaukee. Uh, I actually uh, met a female uh, at Atlanta Slaughter in uh, Milwaukee. Oh, conference in savannah georgia well i'm gonna ask you that question again we are pop we're popping your mic back up here uh we wanted to make sure that we had everything taken care of that i want to remind everybody um clippers and cops is an amazing organization that ty dennis runs um he worked in atlanta in the gang unit for a long time retired came back to the st louis area from st louis, from st. louis. uh now he's bringing um police in the inner community, the cities together, doing what he can to keep every done. We're, we're promised we're getting your mic taken care of here. Um, he is doing some good works. And you know what I, I love most about Ty is that he tells the truth, his truth to anything you can ask. And he's not afraid of any questions. Uh, Projo, you just give me the thumbs up when you think we're ready. Yeah, there's our there's our voice. There's our voice. <laughs> hey, let's talk about uh, the latest. What's going on with cop, uh, Clippers and Cops, my friend? Uh, we just got back from Milwaukee uh, a week and a half ago. Uh, I met a female by the name of Arletta Slaughter at a conference in Savannah, Georgia. And uh, she didn't get a chance to hear me speak at the conference. Uh, some other ladies did, and they were telling her about Clippers and Cops. Uh, she and I actually got on the same flight, so I had an hour to basically sell her on the program, show her videos, and she basically was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to find funding to get you guys there, and sh a year later, she did. Uh, they rolled out the red carpet for us. They treated us like rock stars. Uh, from the time we got off the flight, uh, we went to eat dinner. We had our own Clippers and Cops menu at the steak restaurant. When we walked into the school to do our campus invasion, the kids had on Clippers and Cops t-shirts. Uh, at the event, G's Clippers, the barbershop is an old bank, so it's huge. Uh, they welcomed us like no other. Their police chief uh, loved it. Uh, the community loved it and can't wait to go back. Um, we have Clippers and Cops here in St. Louis on Wednesday, June 4th. Um, at the Barber Life 314 is at Kings Highway in Farland uh, from 6 to 8. Wait a minute, John, what? June? This Wednesday, the 14th. Oh, the 14th. Okay. Correct. Uh, here in St. Louis. Uh, then I have to be in Atlanta that Thursday to do Clippers and Cops in Atlanta uh, this coming Thursday at uh, Studio 6. So Remind people what you're doing, this whole mission, what's going on. It's been a little bit since we had you in studio, and we have an audience all over the country that could help you out as well as long as they know what Ty Dennis and Clippers and Cops is all about. Clippers and Cops, I basically created the program to try to bridge the gap between law enforcement and the community. The goal of the program is to have all voices heard, uh, the community to hear where law enforcement stand, but law enforcement to also listen and hear where the community is coming from. Um, in order, if as police, if we're supposed to be for the community, why aren't we interacting with the community? Uh, we've been doing it since March of 2018. Uh, I've started in a barbershops. I've been everywhere, classrooms, prisons, schools. We started in Atlanta. We've reached different cities, different states, different countries, different continents. And it blows my mind every time. When we were in Milwaukee, I had a humbling moment. Like, to think this is something that I created from scratch and to see the grasp and what we're able to do. Um, the, my motto is be the change that you want to see. A lot of people talk about what's wrong with the world. They talk about crime. They talk about all these different things. And it's like, what are you doing? We all can play a little part in trying to do something different instead of just talking about it. You're safe. I mean, you're, you are literally saving lives. I, I can't even count how many lives you have probably saved because you know what? I don't think people truly understand what's at play here. Do you know most people that, and I would say probably a lot of people listen to the show have never been in the worst areas of St. Louis. Right. They don't drive up and down, let's say Jefferson or Hodemont or some of these other places. Or in whatever you, city in Chicago in, or in Atlanta. Any city, wherever, where, exactly. Wherever you live in this country, in those crime ridden areas, people don't understand how these kids actually live and what they have to see every day, the vacant buildings and uh, having to not be able to have their let your kids play outside. And you guys are there, your police officers, you're protecting them as much as you're protecting us. And these kids, I, I think they feel so helpless. And I'm so glad they have someone like you and your organization to reach out and bridge that gap. Well, I like going to the hood. 
or I, I can go anywhere. Uh, I feel comfortable in any setting in any part of the country. Um, like it's a young Jeezy, the rapper said, real recognize real. When you're real, people can absorb it. They can, they know when you're phony, they know when you're not being honest and true. And when we go into some of these neighborhoods, I like to bring the light to some of these neighborhoods because some people are victimized twice. Just because I live in this neighborhood doesn't mean I'm a criminal. It's, I live here because of my circumstances or this is where I grew up or this is where I'm from. Um, when you're a kid and you grow up in that environment, you don't necessarily know any different. This is home. This is all you know. Until you start to get away and see different, you start wanting different. Or for myself, I want to pour back into my community. I grew up in the Fountain Park neighborhood. I love where I am come from. I tell anybody where I come from, I'm proud of where I am come from because I wouldn't be who I am today without it. Everything that makes me great, <laughs> everything that made me different makes me great. Um, being a DSEG student, coming from the Fountain Park neighborhood. I'm a ball of all of that that makes me who I am today. So I wouldn't change it. That's one of the roughest that, parts of St. Louis right now. That is yeah. definitely one of the roughest parts. And that's why for me, my motto now is one block at a time trying to, I want to literally bring the Clippers and Cops headquarters to Fountain Park neighborhood uh, and basically start the rebuild. And by investing in it myself would show and get the ball rolling on trying to be that change, living by what I'm preaching. <laughs> How can people help you, uh, Ty, uh, in the next few minutes? We're going to make sure that we get people, uh, if they want to jump in and try to help your mission and what you're trying to do. Clippersandcops.org or on all social media platforms. You can go to YouTube, see any videos about what we're about, uh, anything that we've done. Uh, we're looking for corporate sponsorship overall. Uh, the goal of the program is to, I want to do a tour with the program and literally go not only St. Louis and Atlanta or home base, but to other cities. These aren't the problems we're dealing with here in St. Louis is not just a St. Louis problem. These are nationwide issues. And when we go to different cities, you get to feel the vibe in these other cities that they are dealing with the same stuff that we're dealing with. And overall, all we're trying to do is show people that we don't have to continue to keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Let's do something different. Um, by bringing, making ourselves just available to listen, empathy, empathizing with people, empathizing with um, communities that never sat down and had talks with cops, we're able to provide perspective. And we give we give a voice to the police because some of the police have different, want to say things and they can't because they're restricted by the departments in which they work. You go to the heart of the matter. For those people who have gotten past Clippers and Cops because you just started the program and you've come here, you've told us before there's no deterrent like seeing police officers. There's no deterrent like punishing when you commit crimes so that people see that. You had to, not because things got so bad, but you had to think that St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner stepping down was a good thing for the city. For me, I don't know her well enough. Um, and I only say that because of the results. And I knew Kim personally and said on this show that I liked her as a person, but it was not working as a circuit attorney, in my opinion. My opinion is I didn't know her well enough to necessarily speak on it. But at the same time, I think that our we need to revisit government in itself. Um, it's not a one person job. Um, no. I think that it's a system that needs to be revisited because although she's the head of the of the, the snake, I think that there's other parameters that need to be in the place where one person doesn't just have all of that power or all that decision making. I think that and we can't arrest our way out of these some of these problems, although those that need to go to jail or prison. Great. But we have to have some type of deterrent that, OK, if I made a mistake, can I get some type of pr something to try to re the, the goal of punishment is to rehabilitate mm -hmm. and to reinfuse them back into society. Prison of today is not rehabilitating. No, it is not. It's basically you're making them worse. If That's you're not a criminal already, you will be by the time you come out. Correct. Because you have to prison. You have to learn how to survive in that environment. And then when they put you back in a regular society, that's not prison. Well, and it's supposedly, I've heard anyway, a lot like PTSD. You know, some of these people who have committed very minor offenses, I'm not talking about violent criminals, I'm talking about other offenses that send somebody to jail, you end up, I mean, things are so different in prison. But than I'm they talking are about street. violent. Oh, yeah. Violence and is a whole different thing. Take St. Louis and the, the gun crime and everything else. There has to be deterrence, right? I Co mean, correct. And so, and this is an indirect situation of what you're working with. But they have to start at such a young age. My, my, 
recommendation is, like you said, officer presence deters crime. The only way we're going to get more officers, like I always tell you guys, is pay them better. At this point, uh, since 20, we've had a lot of officers, including myself, that have chose to do something else. If you pay them more, uh, more officers will be less likely. Where to does do that money come from? I don't know. I'm not a politician. It comes from the freaking budget but in St. That, Louis City or any other city. At the end of the day, we find money to build stadiums. We find money to build whatever we want. We can find that's money. Private, to, that's private money. Well, let's get some private money. I'm with you. My whole thing is none of that stuff matters if you don't feel safe Don't go into it. So until you pay the officers that – to keep to make you safe or to make people stay away from that, guess what? The crime is going to continue. People are not going to want to go to the baseball game. People are not going to – you can build whatever you want. People are not going to want to go because my car – it's going to cost me tickets to get in plus my window to get fixed. Well, I'm going to be curious to see if Gabe Gore – and I know it's not just one person, right. the new circuit attorney. I got a feeling, Ty, he's going to be a whole lot better than what we just saw. I – I'm all for it. All I'm for is safety and change. And whoever, I don't care time. who's correct. And but what you're doing. That's why that you, I you hit the situation <laughs> before anybody else does. And it's an opportunity for them to come out and state their case to tell the people, forget all the political stuff. Come tell the, the people that live, you could say crime, like in every city, they say crime is down. The numbers say this. Tell the people that live in these environments that crime is down or ask where they come from. Or even you guys come into the city. How do you feel? What is your, how do you feel about some of these things? And until we hold people accountable, when you come to Clippers and Cops, you can't hide behind your role. You are a regular person there. Mm -hmm. We have had senators, house reps, convicts and cops and regular people all in the same room. No, I, I've been, I've been to a few of them. I exactly, know. Exactly. It's not candy coated. It's not. It's real. Correct. Real recognized is real. There you go. You and can't more people need that. to do that. You know, more people need to step out of, I call it their comfort zone. Correct. Because I'll tell you what, I, most of the people I know, again, would never be in different parts of St. Louis. And particularly sometimes where you hold these events. Right. People need to step out of their comfort zone. It's so easy for us to look the other way. And to, to just wipe it out of our mind that there are people who live out there a different lifestyle than we do. Well, when you watch the news, the news, some people, that's the only vision that they have of certain areas. That's right. Um, when you see different, you have, you become, your thoughts become different because then you start to hear the different stories that didn't make the news. You start to meet people and you're like, you're from what? When I mm -hmm. tell people I'm from, you're from Fountain Park? Like, I'm, what did you think? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like. You have to get out of your, like you said, out of your comfort zone to empathize with something you may know nothing about. And the moment that you do that, that's how we create change. Hey, by the way, I wanted you to let people know how they can, uh, if you know, and I don't put you on the spot a little bit, uh, how they can find your podcast. You, you're on the <laughs> pod, Did I put you on the spot on that? Because I know that you Ford do up. it. <laughs> What's that? We're not there yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're getting it all together. We're getting it together. My buddy, uh, Michael Seiden, uh, White Mike, he does Clippers and Cops with me. We're working on a podcast. And I just wanted to promote it because I, I saw a little bit of your stuff when you guys were in our studio recording because, you know, if people didn't know, they can rent our studio for their own podcast. And you guys have a freaking badass podcast that's coming. Well, Mike is a news reporter in Atlanta. And he and I are great. White Mike is the best name for a news because, guy. Because, <laughs> well, that's not, his, that's not his news name. I know, but. With Clippers and Cops, we have two mics. Yeah. I don't do Clippers and Cops by myself. Dante Booker, 20-year veteran. Orrick Curry, retired sergeant major, retired detective, Atlanta police. Uh, Tyrone Finney, 15 years. Andre Lowe, 15 years. Uh, Kim uh, Underwood, she was my partner in gangs, just retired, 32 years. And then there's Michael Carter, or light-skinned Mike, who's the SWAT commander. <laughs> and then there's Michael Seiden, who's our like our media person, who's white Mike. He's white, white. Correct. <laughs> there you go. And so not to confuse the two, we made up nicknames. And then I almost forgot our the voice of Clippers and Cops, Maurice Sweeney. He's, our, he's a radio personality. He's able to keep the mood light. And when all of us get together, and shout out to my buddy Ruben Houston. Ruben and I have the craziest relationship. I actually arrested Ruben in 2015. <laughs> he had the number one single in the country. 
And from that, I kind of derailed it. I was on a federal search warrant. But since then. Damn, you suck, Ty. I, 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 I really feel bad. But <laughs> the relationship that he and I have established is unprecedented. And he actually comes with us to talk to the kids with Clippers and Cops. That goes back to the point of rehabilitation. He has chosen to change his life. I didn't. All I did is when the day of the search warrant, we was out there from 3 a.m. to noon. I was hungry. I'm a big guy. We, I stopped to get food, and I, I'm a human. I'm not going to eat in front of somebody. I don't care if you're in custody or not. And I said, do you want some? And he was like, bro, I ain't no snitch. Like, you can't buy me. Was he in cuffs? <laughs> yeah, he was in custody. <laughs> and when I said that, he was like, I ain't no snitch. I'm like, I don't need you to snitch. I'm just not, not going to eat in front of you. And then, then I got. He, I said, if you want something, get something. If not, I'm moving on. He got something to eat. And I never saw him for four years. I'm working a fair. And he started walking towards me. And I stepped back like, what's up? <laughs> and he basically was like, no, nah, I want to shake your hand. You're the first officer to treat me like a human being. And he was like, if you ever need me for anything, give me a call. And when we started doing Clippers and Cops Campus Invasion, we went to Georgia Tech. I felt that he would be – he played cornerback at Georgia Tech. He used to guard mm -hmm. Cal Calvin Johnson. He was a first-round grade. Best receiver I ever saw playing the there NFL. There you go. Sorry. And he guarded I'm him every day. I'm biased, Detroit so, Lions. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, he comes and tell. I can tell my story as a police officer. He tells his story from his own life, his own path. And the kids absolutely love them because, once again, real, recognize real. Hey, real quick, somebody wanted us to ask you before we let you go, Ty, of Clippers and Cops. Uh, did you ever get a chance to meet Ann Dorn in, in St. Louis? Her no. husband was murdered at the uh, store in the riots. Captain David Dorn. Captain David no. Dorn. Okay, just somebody was just curious if you'd ever met her. Uh -huh. Just thought that that might be a good connection. I would love At to some point in time. We will have to introduce you. A, an amazing woman. Uh, who was brought into the the spotlight because of a tragedy that when her husband was murdered uh, during the St. Louis riots was it four years ago now? Is it three years? Two thousand nineteen or uh, at the at the um, I know what you're talking at about the pawn at shop. the pawn shop. Correct. Yeah. I, and so here I was in Atlanta during that time. I saw all of that different stuff play out through social media. Even though it's just like now, I'm still in. Even though I'm in St. Louis, I've been here three years. I'm still in Atlanta, like basically. Yeah. And it's the same thing when I was in Atlanta. I was still here. Some people don't even know which city I'm in. <laughs> They're like, where are you? I don't know what city you're in. You're all over the place. You know, you just made a statement. And you said that this the, this gentleman came back to you. And he said, you treat, you're the first police officer who treated me like a human. Do, do you think that that lends to a lot of the crime that takes place? Do you, you know so many police officers. I know so many police officers. Do you feel that too many officers are just too redundant in their daily work and they're not taking that extra step? Well, I think that all officers are different, just like all in any profession, everyone is different. Um, I think that a lot of officers, majority of the officers do what they're supposed to do, and it goes unnoticed okay. because they do it every day. But then you have one bad apple that spoils the bunch. Like a lot of people think that like the public wants to see us actually hold an officer accountable for brutality or whatever. They literally want you to walk in with a head of an officer like, I got one. I got yes, a bad one. Not knowing that a lot of this stuff goes on behind closed doors. As a police officer, if we're in a unit together, we have conversation every day. That's People ask me, what do you miss about being a cop? I miss my unit. I miss being in the office interacting like, like we are a family. Like you're with these people more than you're with your own family. I miss having conversation. And if, if, when, if during the course of battle, Things happen where you like, hey man, don't do that. Like you're tripping, or you have you correct the problem right then and there. And I think that the public don't see that. Now, do I think there are some officers that need to choose a different profession? Of course, yeah, because as some, with anything, with anything. But the difference between the a cop game. is you can ruin someone's life, not with a, of course with a gun, but with your pen, because you think, oh, I'm just gonna write them. Well, you could really hurt somebody who's already in financial disarray. By doing that. So I, I was always taught from the, my first day, Lieutenant Terry Steele, shout out, he retired Atlanta. He sat me down and he said, these are your people. I don't care what color they are, what creed they are. He said, you treat people how you would want your own family to be treated. And if you can live by that code, you'll be all right. And I've lived by that. And that's why I hold my head high in any community, any city I go, because I know I did it right. Ty, 
before we let you go then, once again, the event is Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Well, how can people come out and check this out again? Just show up? Just show up. It's open to the public. We welcome anybody that, even if you want to come talk, even if you want to just come listen, we welcome anybody. At the end of the day, I tell people the first, even you've been, both of you, I think both of y'all been, uh, when you come, listen. Just You don't have to come talk if you don't want to. Just come listen. Come feel the energy of change happening right before your eyes. It blows people's mind that we are actually doing. They, they look at us like we're aliens, like, y'all going where? And it's like, <laughs> we, why not? We are the change that we want to see. We're not saying Clippers and Cops is an end all. All we're saying is this is what we're doing to try to make change. And I love doing it. I love helping people. I love seeing people saying thank you. Like, I get humbled. When we Milwaukee, I was sitting there. Somebody said, you're not talking that much. And I'm like, I'm trying to keep from crying. Like, like, just to see something that you thought about on your couch go as far as it has is, is humbling. But God make everything happen for a reason. I don't know everybody religious believe, but I believe in God. Clippersandcops.com. <laughs> Clippersandcops.com. Do you ever get people that's try to do, do you have people go, oh man, you're just, you're, you're conservative. You're a Republican. Mm-mm. They don't, okay. But, well, I'm like just... I told y'all, we've talked, y'all ask all type of stuff when I come up here. <laughs> and like I tell y'all, <laughs> y'all do. I don't, I, it doesn't bother me because I'm comfortable. Are you getting into this politics thing? Are you getting well, into this presidential thing? I don't feel thing? that with politics, two groups represent our country. They I, don't. And I, and I, I you're a Republican. You're I just Democrat. can't ever see you voting for Joe Biden because you got to expect more out of somebody. At the end of the day, I don't see myself, most of the people that are lined up in front of us, I don't, they don't don't necessarily relate to me fully anyway. Yeah. I don't think no candidate has come across and you're like, that's me right there. Like, no. <laughs> and so with that, I, I love think the way that you said that. <laughs> because people try to put you in a box and say, well, if you're black, you're a Democrat. If you're white, you're a Republican, different stuff like that. And that's not fair. Like, that's, it's not fair. And you're right. In this country, we have many different factions, not two parties. There you go. But we're forced into boxes. There you go. Unfortunately. And you get it. Be the change that you want to see, Vic. Amen, my man. <laughs> Hey, appreciate it, Ty. Thanks, Love you, buddy. Ty Dennis, Clippers and Cops Wednesday night. What's the address? Ooh. Do you have that? Or how, can they go to clippersandcops.org? They could, but I could read it off real fast. Check Give out check out Ty's site, clippersandcops.org, clippersandcops.org. The Barber Life, 314-4026 Kings Highway Boulevard. Could you repeat it one more time? The Barber Life, 314-4026 Kings Highway Boulevard. It's a block up from Natural Bridge. If you made it to Matthew Dickey, you went too far. All right. I love you, it. Oh, you were there. Nope. This is a different new one. Okay. This all right. Different. Well, I hope I hope you, you got me visit around all parts out. of St. Louis City I that I haven't hey, been to. Hey, guess and that's what? good for I, you. I love it. When I saw you walked in, I couldn't talk to you because oh, yeah. I was in the back, but I loved it. And even Brad Chris and Nick Schwar has come through. Yeah, and Nick when was. They, Brad, I told him, you don't have to talk. And he got put on the spot. And that's, I respect him big time. Let me see what I can do about trying to get out there again Wednesday. If it helps you out um, just by presence you, being there. Your face means so much because I know you got a million and one things that you could be doing. He a good looking dude, too. So you know, <laughs> he, bring, he bring people out. But I'm <laughs> saying, by you being there, it says a lot. And I appreciate the support. And I know that you can... How often do you come to that neighborhood? Yeah. Right. Not, and this is a good Not being in news anymore. I used to be news, but not that much anymore. And the whole but I was shocked is, how people recognized when I was just by showing up like, oh, why are you here? Because like, we, wake, we wake up with you Ty's my guy. Ty's my guy. I so, appreciate it, man. Ty Dennis, clippersandcops.org. We appreciate it. Have a great day, my friend. You too. We appreciate it. Ty Dennis making things happen with Clippers and Cops. And you know what? Be the change you want to see. Ty puts right. it. Ty. There you go, y'all. Wait for the for my live. <laughs> <laughs> He's live. Uh, Ty, no, it's the real deal. You got to have real conversations, and it's not just a conversation. And you can have. You got to take action. You can conversations have first, but nothing gets done unless you take action. Well, and he's taking action. And he and he's very. Ty is the most real person I maybe I've ever met. 